require routing techniques that are applied to single board, you know, single layer boards. It's not easy and it's really difficult to get a board that's going to pass EMC with today's ICs. You can do it with metal gate CMOS. You're not going to do it with 30 nanometer devices that you're buying today. It's just not possible. Again, when you close a switch, you're adding a new space. This means that now you've created another power supply, which is all the more important that even IOs need to be good transmission lines. You need to direct that energy from the source to where it's going in a space that it owns. It has to be a discrete space for all the power supplies that deliver energy to the integrated circuits and then all the IOs as they're driving energy because you're just taking this energy from the transmission line that brings it to the IC and you're allowing it to move into the new space. That new space has to be firmly designed as well as a transmission line, one dielectric away from ground. To repeat, almost all EMC issues can be tracked down to poor power supply design. When I get customers to, con to contact me regarding issues they're having in their EMC testing, I usually look at the board stack and I'm done because if they've allowed any of the layers to be more than one dielectric away from ground. And then I take a quick look at those layers. If they're not routed as a well-defined single layer board, then those are the things that have to be changed to make it so the board will work, especially in the idea of the power supplies. They really have to be designed properly. You can't have power separated from ground by multiple dielectrics and multiple signal layers even if you weren't causing terrible things to happen to those signals, the impedance is so large that you're restricting the amount of energy that you can move through that large space. So you're increasing the number of waves. And all of these things are absolutely dangerous to do in a circuit board design. And one more thing, if you do all this right, you don't need pie filters, ferrites, and inductors to control the noise. You, you don't want to restrict the energy moving. You want to store it in the right container, in the right place, and put the right plumbing between those containers. You don't need inductors and ferrites. I did my first network control board. It had a power supply requirement for the one volts at seven amps per microsecond. In the reference design, there were 28 ferrites and inductors on all the various 